several years ago, uh, as part of our formation, we, they sent us to do a, a Rome experience, to experience the universality of the, of the church. And one day we were, we had a, a, a Saturday morning off. So we had a Saturday morning off and my classmate and I were wondering what to do with it. He was saying like, oh, the other day I passed through a really cool place that we could go out for breakfast. So we met us in Peter Square, we went out for Mass and uh, we had agreed to go to this place right afterwards. And so he's like, yeah, it's just it's within walking uh, uh, distance, probably be 15, 20 minutes or so. It's like, oh, great, no big deal. We get ready. After uh, 15 minutes, after half an hour, after an hour, there's no end to this place. And so finally, after two hours, when there was a guy following us, screaming someone, something in Italian, something that sounded like Satan. And we were wearing a Roman collar, so I was like, we, we finally stopped and I told him, like, dude, I think... Uh, we might be close to hell because Satan is around here. Like they, they, that's what this guy keeps yelling. And um, we continue to walk for a little bit. And finally, I told him, I was like, you know what? I think uh, we should fast for, from breakfast. Uh, there's a there, there's a place here. We can do lunch there. And and so we get to that place. We sit down. We start eating. And finally, we realize that they don't take credit cards. And we did not have uh, cash. And so. He's like, just wait for me here. I'll go look for an ATM. And you can see where that went. Um, we made it back home by the end of the night, I think. Uh, and so the point of, of the blind cannot lead the blind, right? It's so true that if we do not know where we're going, we're just going to continue to go on and on and never get there. And the importance of knowing what direction we're going, where is our heart moving us, where is the Lord wa wanting to lead us and to guide us. The fact of the matter is that we all have teachers, whether we know it or not, whether it's someone we trust and we love, whether it's someone that, that we appreciate or whether it's something that we really want to uh, uh, do or achieve or gain. We always have a teacher in our lives. And we are disciples of something or someone in our lives. Regardless if we think about it or not, we are always following someone. And I think that the Gospels and the readings today are uh, telling us to really focus on what is it that we follow? Who do we follow? Who is our teacher? The blind cannot lead the blind. And the disciple will become like his teacher, the Gospel says. In this story of my friend, I truly became like my, my, my teacher. I became lost and hungry. Because he did not know where he was going and therefore I became the same thing that I was following. Because he did not have a clue. So he, uh, he claimed he did, but obviously he didn't. Uh, and so that was clear. And so who do we follow? I think that there is a big difference between who do we want to follow and who do we actually follow. I get that we're gathered here for church on this beautiful Sunday morning. We come to worship the Lord. We come to bring our needs and petition to our Lord Jesus. So I assume that we all want to follow Jesus. We're here because of that. Because we want to follow Him, because we want to be with Him, because we believe in Him. But is that who we actually follow? I think it would be interesting to make a, a, good, um, a good exercise for ourselves. When we go home and after a week long, do we, it would be good for us to think about and to reflect. During my free time, where do I spend my free time? Do I spend it with my family? Do I spend it alone? Do I spend it in, the front, in front of the TV? Do I spend it out with drinking or doing stuff? Or do I spend it praying or reading? Like what do I do with my free time? And also, like take a look at my credit card. Where is most of my money going within a, a month's time? I think that those will be good indicators of where our heart is what we actually follow, what we actually consider important. Because we'll spend our time and our money where we think it's worth it. Where we think it's important. And therefore what we think is important is what we are actually following. I think it would be a good exercise for us to know where our heart is. And who is it that we are actually following. But how do we bridge this gap between our desire and our action? How do we bridge this gap between like wanting to follow the Lord and actually following the Lord? And the Lord is inviting us to look deeply within our hearts. Both the, the first reading and the gospel are telling us that our words reveal what's in our heart. 
Our words reveal, reveal our, our faults. Our words reveal where our mind is. And the gospel said the last line that for, for from the fullness of the heart our mouth speaks. So the Lord is asking us to invite, well, what is it that we carry within our hearts? What is it that is within us that perhaps does not allow us to grow, that perhaps does not allow us to love and to serve our, 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 our family, our friends, and our neighbors? What is it that we carry within ourselves that perhaps continues to be an open wound that does not allow us to be rooted in the Lord? As you know, I was doing a silent retreat and... Uh, I love the silence. After seven days in silence, I felt that I was called to be a monk somewhere. Because uh, I just love the silence. And, and the beauty of the sil silence is precisely in the pay painfulness of it. Because the more silent you become, the more painful it is. There's something painful in the silence of knowing that there's something in your heart that you do not want to embrace, that you do not want to become fully aware of. That in the silence of your heart, Whatever it is that is going on, like, comes to the surface. When there's no entertainment, when there's no one to talk to, when there's no music, when there's no TV, all of a sudden, like, that stuff comes to your heart and you become aware of certain wounds, of certain experiences, of, of certain stuff that you carry within yourself. And it is when you embrace that, when you invite the Lord into that painful silence, that you become free, that you become you're able to really let go of whatever it is that is bothering you so that you give it to the Lord and the Lord comes and helps you and strengthens you. And it is there that you gain the freedom to put your heart where you want to put it. Otherwise, we just let the world and the noise kind of direct and guide where we put our hearts. And so we all seek happiness, we all seek fulfillment. And the only way to achieve that is that the deeper we go into the silence of our hearts, the more room we'll make for our Lord. The deeper we go into our hearts, the more we're going to be able to empty that garbage and make room for the Lord to come and dwell within us. Because truly our words really reflect how well our heart is, how well we're taking care of it, how we speak to our brothers and sisters, how we relate to others. Reveal how we feel inside. And sometimes we don't even know how we come across. But He truly reveals how we feel inside. And so today when the Lord comes in the Eucharist, He'll come into our hearts. What kind of heart will He find? What kind of place is He going to come into? Is He going to find room for Himself? Is He going to find a place willing to work with the Lord, willing to embrace our poverty, our brokenness, our need, neatness. Is He going to find a place to rest within us? Because that's where it's at. That's where our happiness is. In our brokenness, the Lord wants to meet us. In the silence, the Lord wants to love us. Will He find that Silence place, that empty place in your heart today. What will the Lord find? What will the Lord look at today when He comes into your heart?